Hey everyone, welcome to another edition of Leaders and Learners, where we know that the best leaders are lifetime learners. And today I'm gonna to bring you someone that I've been able to watch over my career, um, at least for the last, I'd say five or six years in Redondo Beach. She is an amazing visionary, a storyteller um, with the camera. She has continued to educate herself in her own field and increase her knowledge. She has increased her skills and her abilities, and she is doing some fabulous work for cities, for businesses, and now for her passion project. I wanna introduce you to Miss Marcy Klein. Hi, Tanya, thank you so much for having me. Absolutely, extremely excited to have you here. I want you to introduce yourself to the people a little bit and let them know how you got into this line of work because it hasn't been what you've always done, but you have started your own business, you're doing your own thing, you are paving your own path, and I think it's absolutely fantastic. Thank you. Well, um, my career path started when I was a student at UCSD and I discovered surfing. <laughs> and I wanted to be on the beach all the time. So instead of, um, instead of being in class, and so I declared myself a communications major and therefore I had lots of time to surf um, but I was forced to learn how to learn how to use a video camera for my for communications classes. And once I got an, into communications, I fell in love with telling stories with the video camera and how television worked. And so I spent my college career learning and becoming a production assistant. And when I got out of college, I started as a production assistant in Hollywood, worked my way up to segment producer, um, field director, senior producer, and um, and supervising producer on various reality TV type shows like um, Inside Edition, Hard Copy, Extra, Dr. Phil, E! Entertainment, all those types of shows that, um, that you kind of, you know, click through your channels and, and catch them on TV sometimes. And so I spent about uh, almost 20 years doing that, working as a field director and just loving telling stories going out in the field with a cameraman and a sound man or a camera woman or a sound woman and telling stories. And, um, and then I would, we'll read our scripts and edit the stories together and just really having a great time. But there came a time when my clock was ticking and I decided that I wanted to stop and become a mom. So I ended up doing that. And once I had my kid, two, two little boys, I had them pretty quick in a row. Um, I ended up, um, deciding to stop TV completely and just be a mom. And that lasted about, I don't know, seven, about seven years I stayed home as a mom until I started getting the creative bug and I had to start telling stories again with video. But I didn't want to go back to television because I wanted to still see my children and watch them grow up. And in television, you don't really have control over your, over your schedule. So I became, um, I decided to open my own business where I would do business videos. And I started dabbling with very small businesses and real estate videos. And that's kind of the path that I started. Um, and I've been here since t uh, 2000, about 2017 now, telling stories. And I have a video production office and a studio. I love that. I love the work that you do. I love how you are making an impact in your community. I want you to talk about some of the community work that you do and bring it um, full circle as to how you're able to balance that, because with it being um, Women's History Month, many women that have made history had to balance, right? You have to balance, you have to remain sane, you got to make sure all the people that need the love and get it, and you have projects and things that you want to pour into. So talk about some of your community work and how you balance that all out. Um. Community work. Let's see that what I'm the main thing. I'm I sit on the board of the board of directors for the Redondo Beach Chamber. Um, I also did leadership Redondo, which brought me um, close to a, a group of people, and we did a community project. Um, and I'm also a public arts commissioner now. And so basically, um, I just love getting involved with the community and collaborating with other creative people and even non-creative people, but just collaborating with people to make things happen. Good things happen, hopefully, for the community. Um, and of course, there always is a balance. You know, I don't, sometimes um, I'm one of those people, if someone asks me to do something, the, the answer is usually yes. 
And I've been learning, and this is a topic about learning, learning the magic power of the word no, because sometimes I'll take on too much. And I really want to have that balance and make sure, and I've, I've started using the word so I can actually really be with my kids. Sometimes just carpooling my kids to where they need to go and not doing that volunteer thing is as important because I don't want my kids to think I abandoned them just for the community. I want, you know, and so that's always just a work in progress, finding that balance. Learning to say no. Y'all hear that? <laughs> Learn to say no sometimes. <laughs> Everybody can't have all of you. You have to have a piece of you that's left for self and that's left for those that deserve it the most. So I applaud you for that because I've been able to kind of see your um, your transition into these spaces where you're like, N you know what, maybe not. I'd love to, but, and I think those are yeah. great terms and phrases that many of us um, can pick up. Is, I would love to, but. I know, yeah. and you know, it's interesting. I think that, I think that, <laughs> I think that women in general, I don't know if it's, it's a, if it's a gender thing, but I always want to help. I always want to say yes. And it's always that struggle because, you know, as business entrepreneurs, we have to, um, we have a certain value that we have to place in ourselves and we have to, in order for us as women to get ahead in, in our business, we have to um, compete at the same, at the same level as our male counterparts. But sometimes as a woman, we're just so nurturing and we want to say, yes, we want to be that yes person. It's really hard to find that balance of when to say no and when to say yes. Cause I, cause you really want, my gut wants to help. I want to say yes to everything. And I want to, help everybody. And I do think it's a very feminine thing to say yes and to want to help. And I want to be a girl, but at the same time, got to, you know, keep up with those boys, you know, right. level that, that playing be. field. <laughs> you know, sometimes you do have to participate in things though that are good for your heart. I think it's important yes. that we acknowledge some of the work that we do is heart health and being able to pour back into causes and organizations that are doing good work in the community is important because if we're not doing it, then who's going to do it? And then how do we complain about it if we're not contributing to it, right? So yes. there is that balance of making sure that you are doing things that fulfill you, making sure that you are doing things that allow for you to expand your legacy. What did you do that help someone else? What did you do that made the world a better place? And with that, I want to go ahead and jump into the fact that your business, it's not just a business that's woman owned, you're licensed. You went and did all the things and did all the bells and whistles that you can say you are a certified woman owned business. Talk about that process because I think people miss a lot of that and why that's important. Yeah. You know, it's, that's really um, something that, that I, I didn't really know about, I sort of fell into it. And now I realize it is one of the best things that I've probably ever done for my business. Mm -hmm. um, um, there, I, I wanted to do, I wanted to explore. And this is funny, Tanya, your husband's the one, I ran into your husband at an event and he's the one that explained it to me. I never knew that there were certified women-owned businesses. And if you are a certified women-owned business, you have an opportunity to bid on many government contracts that you wouldn't have an opportunity to bid on otherwise. And that's like a whole other world. And that's a whole learning world about how to find these opportunities. But you have to get certified first before you can even start looking for the opportunities. So um, the, cert the certification process, I just went to the city of LA and tried to sign up on their portal to become a business with them so I could possibly do work for them. And they are the ones that guided me and said, you have to be a certified women-owned business in order to be on our portal. So... I took their guidance and I went and started digging and found the place to apply. And I applied and basically you, um, the application process is super complicated. You, you almost have to give up your firstborn child to get <laughs> certified. It's not easy, but, um, but once you get all your paperwork and you get it in there, they come and do a site visit. They come to your place of business to make sure you're really a legitimate business. They, they have to see all your tax records, but once you're in as a certified women-owned business, not only are you able to bid for all these um, projects that you couldn't bid for before, but you're exposed to an entire network of women. And if you put the time, it's like it's kind of like anything else. If you put yourself out there and what you put in, you get out. 
So I started attending events that the, that the certified women owned businesses were putting on. They were educational events or meetup events. And at first I was really, you know, nervous. I, I was just all by myself. I didn't know anybody, but women, these women are so inviting and so accommodating and they just want to teach you and embrace you and help empower you. And so many women in the WBE have done that for me. And I try to do that for other women as well to try to um, bring people up into the process and in invite, introduce women to other women who could help their business and just keep the cycle going of helping each other and using the resource to find opportunities. Cause it's not only government opportunities, but w other WBEs can work with WBEs. So we can work with each other and with big corporations and with um, government entities. So being certified is definitely a good opportunity. Yeah, I'm woman owned and um, minority owned. So it is oh. important. It does open doors for you. It does allow for your business to grow and excel. And it also makes you um, uh, available for other opportunities, right? Sometimes people are looking only for those people that are certified because the government actually gives incentives to companies that use women owned or use minority owned businesses. So just saying that you are a woman and you own this business, that's one thing, but getting your certification, that's a whole different thing. And during COVID, it was, it took a lot longer, but we're opening back up. So if you haven't uh, gotten your certification for your business, definitely look into that. And yes, just like Marcy did, and I've had to do, once you get it, then you can register with cities that you wanna work in and become certified in get you know into their database and things of that nature so the certification helps it does take a while it's a little tedious they do keep <laughs> on your child in your right arm but at the end of the day it does open up a lot of opportunities for your business personally and professionally though so speaking of that since you've become certified and started hanging out with these ladies you became <laughs> an author oh that was amazing because yeah because i was on the portal in the portal, there was a publisher that was looking for various businesses um, all around the country to be in a collaborative book. And I'm actually show it to you. So I got to be in this book, Women in Business Leading the Way. And basically, and I'll actually show you, I, was, I ended, up, ended up being in the second book too, which is um, Women in Business um, Breaking Through. And I'm gonna show you the back. So all of these women, each one of us, each have one chapter in the book. And what an opportunity. I mean, I was just, you know, you know, sitting home one day and the phone rang and it was the publisher of this book and asked me if I wanted to be part of it. Through writing a chapter for this book, I became close with many of the women in the book, the other co-authors, and they ended up hiring me to do a lot of their videos, their ex, um, enter, um their explainer videos, their introductory videos, even their commercials for, for their products. So what an amazing network that um, being a WBE has, has opened for me and great just opportunities galore that I never would have expected. So it was probably the best thing that I've done for my career is join this particular organization. Now, listen, we're gonna jump into your passion project. Well, actually, wow. <laughs> actually, you sound like you're passionate about all your projects, but let's go <laughs> ahead and jump into Fly Girl. Talk to the okay. people about Fly Girl and why okay. that's such a passion for you. Yeah, well, to, in order to explain Fly Girls, it's actually called, I changed the name to Five Fly Girls. So it's called Five Fly Girls. And the reason it's such a passion project to me for me is that, um, one of the things I did for my business randomly way back in 2015 is remember when I said I did real estate videos? Well, mm -hmm. you needed to have you needed to have drone in order to be competitive in real estate videos. So I went out and bought a drone. Well, little did I know that back in 2015, if you wanted to use your footage legally, you had to become a sport pilot minimum. And so I'm one of those people that just does not give up. I wanted to learn. I wanted to become a sport pilot. And I did it <laughs> and I learned to become a sport pilot and I realized how difficult it is to become a pilot. And nowadays they change that to, to fly a drone. You only have to be, um, they have a thing called a part 107 where you can learn it in a book, but I actually had to learn it in a plane and I know how hard it is to fly a plane, even a little tiny plane. 
There's just so much to it. So fast forward to me um, going on a surf trip. Remember I told you I wanted to surf all the time. I'm still surfing. So I went on a surf trip to Costa Rica in May and I ran into someone I knew in the lineup um, randomly from Redondo Beach. Now he introduced me to his girlfriend in the swimming pool after surfing. Turns out she's a flight attendant and, but she was kind of over, she was just done being a flight attendant. She had done it for six years and she wanted something more. And she decided she was going to become a pilot for the airline that she is a, a flight attendant for, for Delta Airlines. And I'm like, what? How does a flight attendant become a pilot? I go, I'm a pilot. You know, it doesn't, it doesn't equate, you know, they're not even closely related jobs. But she told me about this amazing program that she was doing called Delta Propel, where you can apply for this program as a flight attendant or anybody who works at Delta. And Delta will keep you on the books as an employee. They won't pay you, but they won't expect you to come to work for five years. And they let you just go off and study and become a pilot, a private pilot, and take that all the way up to get enough hours so that you can be a pilot um, for Delta. Or you get an interview, you're guaranteed in an, inter an interview as a Delta pilot. Mm. So when she told me that she was doing that program, and then she told me she was doing it with four other girls, and they were all diverse women from different ethnicities, I said, oh my God, what an amazing thing you're doing. It's gonna be so hard but I'm so impressed with you. Can I follow you? Can I do a documentary about you and the other women? And she's, believe it or not, she said, yes. Um, mm. I think I had a little credibility because her boyfriend that I surf with, I do surf, surf videos all the time when the waves are too big. And he is consistently in my surf video. So he's seen my work and he knew that I was actually a real producer. So luckily I had that, um, credibility from him. And so she said, yes. And next thing you know, um, I was invited to the, the application party when all five women were applying to, to go to the Delta Propel program and they all well, made it in. That is dope. Let me let the viewers in on a couple of things. Okay. I have a trailer so that you guys can get a great understanding of now this trailer, did you produce it? I did. In fact, in fact, kind of single-handedly with me and the help of some of my interns, because we do not have a budget yet. We're trying to get a budget, but um, so yeah, well, the, the, the viewers will get to see some of my, my handy camera work. <laughs> Absolutely. And I think this is freaking amazing. Thanks. So give me a second and we're going to light this thing. Uh-oh. Uh -uh. One Where second. Yep. I'm going to let you guys see Marcy's cool work. Cool, because she's cool like that. All right, give me a second. And here we go. I don't really think that there's ever been anything in my life that I've set my mind on that I haven't accomplished. A flight attendant is a really fun job, but I wanted more than fun. I saw how the pilots were respected and I really envied them. Good enough is never good enough for me. Try to challenge myself. Your mama's going to be a pilot someday, mama. Where I try to become a pilot, I also want to do more. The idea of a flight attendant choosing to go to flight school and learn to fly and become a pilot 25 to 30 years ago, that would have been dismissed as uh, just impossible. I've flown with about a thousand different pilots and I've seen two women. Young women are not expected to be pilots. Boys go and fly airplanes, they drive, you know, fast cars. Girls just aren't encouraged to do something that, you know, boys do. No aircraft recognizes gender. The only thing the aircraft recognizes sitting is competence. This group has a special bond that we're all flight attendants and we understand one another. I just don't think you see enough of women supporting women. I think if they were like aviation five musketeers in a way. Piper 43241 at the fuel pit with information. X-ray, taxi 29, right with them. Walking down the concourse in my pilot uniform versus my flight attendant uniform will give me a feeling that I made it. It's my like, dream of being a successful pilot. Thanks for sharing that, Tanya. <laughs>
Listen, I want you to let the people know a little bit more about this film and how they can be involved and help make it come to fruition. Yes, well, right now we're in the um, fundraising stages. Um, I'm looking for sponsors right now. And until I find a real sponsor, um, I have done what's called um, crowdfunding, which probably many of you know about. And I have a crowdfunding up for basically for about four more days on Indiegogo.com. So um, I'm basically looking for anyone who wants to be part of the movie. I'm not looking for donations. What I'm looking for is if you, um, if you, I call it backing. If you back the movie, you will get something in return. So you'll get a, a credit on the movie, um, a thank you card, different, depending on the level of your, your backing, you will get a, a gift, I'd say, or something back in return um, if you're part of the project. So we will make sure that we have Marcy's information down in the captions so that if you are interested in being part of something so historical, because highlighting these women, especially now, and the work that they're doing to help balance the scales in the aviation field is just, you know, the possibilities are endless and how you touch lives and how you inspire the next generation of pilots is incredible. So definitely we'll have Marcy's information down at the um, in the captions. So get in touch with her. Go ahead, Mars. Yeah, I wanted to let you know that um, there's also, this is kind of, I didn't even realize this at the time because I just loved the project but there is going to be a pilot shortage coming up next year. There, if they're gonna be about 13,000 pilots short um, for America, because what's happened is all the um, pilots that came in like through the military, um, most of them, they're forced to retire at age 65. So there's a real need for pilots and women are you know 50% of the population. So, um, and mo right now only 6.9% of women are pilots. So if we get the word out to more women that this is a great career path for them, we might actually be able to solve a problem for, for, all, for all of us. So being a part of this project is definitely possibly being a part of history. I think I so. It. So why don't you let the people know um, how they can get in touch with you, how they can stay connected, and if they want you to do videos for their business. Sure. Well, my company is, is called Klein Creative Media, and you spell that K-L-E-I-N. So, and you can reach it. Um, my website is kleincreativemedia.com, and my email is my name, Marcy, M-A-R-C-I, at kleincreativemedia.com. And I'm happy to take, um, if you go to my website and you um, reach the contact page, feel free to email me or reach me by telephone or by text. I'm happy to be connected any way that you guys want to reach out. Awesome. Well, we want to thank you for spending time with us. We want to thank you for sharing your work with us and definitely sharing your story. We know, well, at least I know that you will continue to be one of Redondo Beach's best leaders because you do dedicate yourself mm -hmm. to being a lifetime learner. You're always looking for the next challenge. You're always looking for the next opportunity to improve your business read up on something, learn something new, certify in some kind of new way. And I really don't think that there is any other way to be if you are looking to be successful in your business, make an impact and leave a legacy. And as you've already pointed out, you have two little people um, that might not be so little anymore, but definitely um, on top of mind when it comes to the work that you are doing and the legacy that you are leaving. Well, thank, so you. thank you. Yeah, thank you, thank you so, so much. much. Well, guys, we'll see you on the next episode of Leaders and Learners. Take it easy.